hey, hey out there, it's the library lady. And today I am just covered up in a series of books by Brian Cleary. I have a huge collection here with me uh, that I love to highlight um, that I think are great reads for pretty much any topic that you're trying to work with with your child at home. He's got great books about grammar, math, science, geography, uh, healthy living and nutrition, physical activity, and even coding. So pretty much any book that your child would be interested, Brian Cleary has it covered. Um, I love these books. They're short, they're fun, quick little reads that your kids will love, the pictures, the rhymes, um, and you get a way to introduce a concept or review a concept through using his books. And as a classroom teacher, I used to love using the grammar ones um, to help teach grammar, because really, how exciting can one make nouns? But Brian Cleary does an excellent job the kids connect it with the story. They love the illustrations. They love the witty rhymes. And so it's a great fit um, for maybe making some of those less exciting topics a little more fun. Now, of course, the science ones are great no matter what. Usually kids are always tuned into animals, so no problem there. But the grammar ones are really great plugs. So I like to give a little shout out. Now, I did reach out to him um, to see about sharing his books, and he was very fun to interact with. I've never met him personally, but um, he was excited that I would share his books. So do check his books out. Um, see about maybe ordering or getting a copy for you. Um, and um, I like to share a little bit of the grammar and the math, and then I'll share about some of the other books and some ideas of what you can do. So if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. I'm the Library Lady, and I've set up this channel and this portion called What's the Story to share great kids' books and then give you some ideas on how you can use them in your home or your classroom. So um, kind of a fun thing to do as a former teacher and elementary school librarian. Uh, if you are not new, and you've seen a couple of the videos, thank you. Thanks for coming back and checking this out today. Um, and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay connected and see all the wonderful books that I'm, I'm doing. So um, I like to just remind people that this is not a read, read aloud. I'm gonna share just a portion of the book um, and then share up those ideas and activities for you to use at home. And as always, I love to give credit for all the people that help make this book possible. So we'll start off with the one about nouns because um, that was my kind of first introduction to Brian Clinton books. Um, it was illustrated by Jenna Prosmitsky. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. Um, and it was published in 1999 by Mill Book Press. Now, one thing my kids um, always loved was just the illustrations. So Jenna does a really nice job at making them fun and colorful. And Brian does a fabulous job of making them witty, um, a nice little rhyme to them, and just kind of off the beat. So uh, kids really pick up on that. And the best part is the concept sticks. So um, nouns, um, he always will start off with a um, definition of whatever concept the book is about. Um, I always like to use this as an introduction anyway. Um, so check in with your kids. Do they already know what a noun is? How would they define it? Uh, more on that later. So a noun is a word that names a person, animal, place, or thing. And in this book, a mink, a fink, a skating rink, what is a noun looks like this. Hill is a noun. Mill is a noun. Even Uncle Phil is a noun. And the kids usually love and laugh at all the crazy zany drawings. Gown is a noun. Crown is a noun. In fact, our whole hometown is a noun. If it's a deck, a duck, or deer. If it's a crystal chandelier. If it's a train or brain or frown. It's elementary. It's a noun. So as you can see, Brian just has a real affinity for words and word play. And he makes the book fun and delightful and then shows those kids what really a noun is. And then at the end, he'll always end with, so what is, and then in this case, a noun, do you know? And it's a great way then to review and see what your kids can recall from the book and can they define what it is. So um, another book that I have, you did a follow-up in 2006. Now this is published by Scholastic this time and it's called A Lime, A Mime, A Pool of Slime. More about nouns. So it's kind of a second continuation of the noun series. Um, I own to, to, to Root, excuse me, To Root, To Toot, To Parachute, What is a Verb. Again, grammar not always the best, most exciting topic for kids and so these are a great way to introduce uh, those concepts. And the follow-up to Verbs, published um, by Scholastic, um, and this one was published in 2007, Slide and Slurp, Scratch and Burp, more about verbs. And who doesn't love a book with burp in the title, right? So automatically you got some attention of some of your wild, wacky kids um, that hear you say the word burp. Now, I'd love to share some of the math ones. Again, these are great to introduce math concepts. Um, I own The Action of Subtraction and The Mission of Addition. These two are both published by Scholastic. 
Um, this time they are illustrated by Brian Gable. So a little bit different illustration, illustrator, but still great illustrations, keeps the fun zany rhymes going um, and teaches those concepts. So I'll share a little bit of the edition book. Again, he has that definition at the beginning. So the addition is combining two or more numbers to come up with their total. And then he starts his rhyming story. Adding is growing the total of things like bubbles and bathtubs or bright shiny rings. And the kids are always fascinated by the, by the story and the illustrations. Six yellow buses were parked in a line, three pulled behind them and then there were nine. And so you can see he's got the nice rhyming pattern teaching a little bit about the concept of addition. So lots of great books that he has. Again, I told you he's got some geography books. He's got um, science. He's got um, coding. All these different topics all just written in the same kind of format. Um, and they're just a delight to read. Um, so I would highly recommend checking out his website. So I want to kind of start there for our activities um, because he does have some different games already listed on there. Um, one that I kind of picked up on was was the categorical train game where you have kids think of words um, that go with that topic. So let's use um, verbs. So for example, if you think of the word push, it ends in the letter H. Well, you have to connect a new word that, that starts with the ending letter of the previous word. So if you said push, ending in an H, your next word might be hop. And so it's laid out like a train and there's actual little trains that you can print out um, to connect the words together. So a lot of word play games um, would be great for your child, even just playing something like Scrabble or um, there's a great game out there called Bananagrams um, where your kids get to use words. Um, I would highly recommend that. I know when I reviewed Chris Grabenstein's book, um, Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library, we talked about just playing a board game. So this is the perfect opportunity to just play some word games with your child and engage in word play. Um, if you um, want to go a little old school, a little vintage, you can um, bust out those Mad Libs. You can find a lot online now if you don't use the official Mad Libs version um, where you create a wild and wacky story by using different nouns and verbs and adjectives and kids always think those are hilarious. Um, you may want to do a sort with your child, especially if your child has some words from school that they're working on. Um, maybe sort those by nouns, adjectives, and verbs. Um, if you wanted to print out pictures, um, if that's easier for your uh, learner maybe of a person running, a picture of a tree, um, a little harder to do adjectives in picture format, but um, again, just an easy way to see different words, see different concepts, and sort them out. Um, if you're looking for some math activities, since I read edition, um, lots of great math games are out there. I was always a big fan of math games to reinforce concepts. Um, there's some good games out there called Sum Swamp. It's S-U-M, like the sum. Um, you can do anything with dice, rolling dice, and then get the you know two numbers and add them up. Um, number tiles are great. Um, if you don't have you know pre-manufactured commercial tiles um, with numbers on them, you can just get paper to cut up and put numbers on them and then you can pretty much do anything you can order the numbers you know least to greatest you can compare them you can add numbers anything with that they even make number flashcards so those are maybe something you want to purchase um, to practice different math activities um, again on Chris um, Graberstein's um, Grabenstein's video um, I talked about anagrams, um, and Brian Cleary has that on his website. Um, if you haven't seen that video, watch that. But an anagram is where you take a word, say, like um, silent, and you rearrange the letters to create the word listen. So he has an anagram maker where you can see all these different words that have been changed by just moving around the letters, and that's a fun one to play on. Um, he also has some great poetry books, too, on his website you might want to check out. Um, I learned the Great Lakes of the United States by remembering the word homes. I don't know if you have that same experience, but that's the way that I could remember all the names of the Great Lakes. He actually took it, rearranged it in a different way, and he's come up with a book called Super hungry mice eat onions and it's got a lots of interesting ways to remember geographic facts so that's a fun one you might want to check out as well um another thing too with the animal books i don't have his um in my own personal collection the animal ones but he has one called dolphin fox hippo ox what is a mammal um, and kids usually in the elementary world love animals love to research about animals read about animals um, so i might read his book and learn about the characteristics of mammals um, and then research one of those animals Animals, especially one that your child is interested in and has picked out. 
um, go ahead and do that. You can make drawings of them. There's lots of fun activities online where you can make um, different animals. Uh, for example, if you want to read about penguins, um, you can make a toilet paper roll um, and paper and Google eyes and things like that and turn it into a little toilet paper um, penguin. Um, so just a lot of fun little crafts like that. Another great thing that teachers like to do, um, even with math, um, more so in the science, I was thinking with animals, is a KWL chart. So if you're not familiar with that, um, the K stands for know, like what do you already know about the topic? So if you're gonna read a book about, um, say a fox, ask your child what do they already know about a fox? You can go ahead and write them down, um, or your child can write them down, depending on the age of the learner. Um, the W is for the what do you want to know? Um, this is a chance for you to think of questions with your child, help them think about, you know, they might wanna live, how long does a fox live? Um, how many babies does a fox have at a time? Um, things like that. Um, and and then the L, well, what did you learn? And this is a good way to recap that. So um, those are a lot of fun. Speaking of recapping, one thing I like to do with this book um, with a noun is I like to sometimes pretend like alien talk um, or robot talk of that if your child can explain in their own words what a concept means, it's a pretty good uh, indication that they can explain it and they have an understanding of it. So I used to try to say like if an alien landed on earth like or a robot came along and said, what is a noun? <laughs> um, what is a noun? Can your child verbalize that? So after the story, when they do ask, so what is a noun? Can your child put in their own words, what is a noun? Um, and if they can do that, then good. They've got that understanding of what that means and probably can then pick them out and realize how to use them in grammatical situations. So um, Brian Cleary, just a lot of fun, a little bit of a word nerd. Uh, no offense, not that's a, a positive compliment. Um, and it's a great way to get engaged in words. It's a great way to look at different math concepts. Um, definitely check out his website because there's a lot of fun resources. Um, another thing real quick, I know this video is a little longer than normal, but there's so many good books in his collection. Um, he's got a series called Sounds Like Reading, and these are just short phonics type readers for things like short A and long A. Um, there's one called The the Nice Mice in the Rice, um, and it even has a teacher's guide uh, on his website. So those are great little readers if you want to look those up to maybe order or see if you can find those out um, maybe at a local bookstore um, and see what you can find because that's a good way to introduce um, the phonetic side of reading to your child. So, so um, definitely worth checking out if you've never heard of him. Um, Brian Cleary, highly recommend him. Lots of different topics. Uh, he does have a list of all of his books online. So you can see um, the wide variety that he offers up. And I hope that you will check him out. So thanks for tuning in to The Library Lady. Um, check in again to see what the next video is. And hit subscribe. Have a good day.